Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. If you're able, would you please stand for the arrival of our official guests? Deputy Commissioner Tracy Linford, representing the Commissioner Ian Stewart, APM, Queensland Police Service. Ms Melissa McMahon, MP, member for McAllister, representing the Premier of Queensland and Minister for Trade, the Honourable Anastasia Palaszczuk, MP. Mr Tim Mander, MP, member for Everton, Deputy Leader of the Opposition and Shadow Treasurer, representing the Leader of the Opposition and Shadow Minister for Trade, Mrs Deb Frecklington, MP. Mrs Salary, Sally Gregory, National Vice President, Australian Bravery Association, representing Mr Andrew Kendall, National President, Australian Bravery Association. Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me in welcoming our official guests. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if you're able, would you please stand for the arrival of the Governor and Mrs De Jersey. Please be seated. Your Excellency, with your permission, I'll begin. His Excellency the Governor will present the following Australian honours and awards and bravery decorations. Awarded the Australian Police Medal, Superintendent Darrell Robert Johnson. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service in criminal investigation, leadership and operational policing, and as District Officer in Command of the Sunshine Coast District, and for active involvement in community activities, including surf lifesaving. Detective Inspector Jonathan Patrick Rouse. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service in leadership and excellence in online child sexual offence investigations and improving capability and training in the area of child safety. Senior Sergeant Annette Marie Stevens, for significant service to the Queensland Police Service, providing exceptional advice on administrative matters and the management of personnel, and for driving innovative work practices for women seeking to balance work and family commitments. Chief Superintendent Matthew Philip Vanderbilt. For significant service to the Queensland Police Service in leadership and excellence in organisational improvement, change management and operational planning and in the development of innovative policing practices. the Bravery Medal, Mr Thomas Bruce Harper, Mr J Zander Waters. On the morning of the 26th of September 2016, Mr Thomas Harper and Mr J Waters went to the assistance of another surfer during a shark attack near Ballina in New South Wales. Mr Harper and Mr Waters, both then aged 16, were surfing at Lighthouse Beach with another friend. 
As they paddled on their boards out to their friend, they saw his board lift out of the water as a four metre great white shark attacked. The boys saw the shark lunging at their friend, grabbing his leg and the surfboard and knocking him into the water. Despite the danger, Mr Harper and Mr Waters paddled out to the injured boy where they saw the shark was tangled in the board's leg rope. Without hesitation, the boys grabbed hold of their friend's arm and placed him between their surfboards and began to paddle towards the shore. By this time, the shark had disentangled itself from the leg rope and began to pursue the boys at a close distance. Despite the threat of the shark attacking again, the boys conveyed their injured friend to the shore where he was treated by emergency services before being taken to Lismore Base Hospital where he recovered from his injuries. By their actions, Mr Harper and Mr Waters displayed considerable bravery and are awarded a bravery medal. Awarded the Bravery Medal, the late Mr Ryan Richard Martin, to be received by Mrs Robin Martin. On the afternoon of the 25th of March 2016, Mr Ryan Martin and several other people were involved in the rescue of a mother and her young daughter from a dangerous rip at Dreamtime Beach in Fingal Head, New South Wales. The mother and daughter were quickly swept out by the rip and towards the jagged rocks of the headland. Seeing them in distress, Mr Martin and another man entered the water and swam through the waves to reach them. Mr Martin grabbed hold of the girl and the other man grabbed hold of the woman and assisted them to stay afloat and away from the rocks. The group then continued to be pushed around the headland by the rip. When Mr Martin and the other man became tired, others who had also entered the water helped the woman and child stay afloat and managed to swim the woman back to the beach. By this stage, Mr Martin was in difficulty and unable to stay afloat. A rescue boat crewed by lifesavers then arrived and pulled one of the men and the young girl into the boat. They took them to the beach where they were assisted by others. The crew returned to the group and pulled the remainder of the people into the boat and took them to shore. Tragically, Mr Martin could not be revived. By his actions, Mr Martin displayed considerable bravery and is awarded a bravery medal. Awarded the Bravery Medal and awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct and awarded the Group Bravery Citation, Senior Constable Adam David Tickner, Mr Peter Neil Steer, Senior Constable Michael Romus Grigalius, Sergeant Gordon Dean Holmes. In the early morning of the 6th of November 2014, Senior Constable Tickner, Mr Steer, Senior Constable Grigalius and Sergeant Holmes were involved in the apprehension of an armed offender at Noosa Heads in Queensland. At 4.45am a domestic violence incident occurred at a residence in Noosa Heads when a male discharged a firearm causing head injuries to a female who required hospitalisation. The offender fled the scene on a motorcycle before flagging down a vehicle driven by Mr Steer. In a di dis distressed state the offender admitted the assault to Mr Steer believing he had killed his partner. He surrendered his firearm to Mr Steer, who placed it in his vehicle and then called triple zero. While waiting for the police to arrive, the offender opened the passenger door and retrieved the firearm from the car. He then pointed it directly at Mr Steer before commandeering the vehicle and driving off. Soon after, Senior Constable Tickner and, and another police officer arrived at the scene. Mr Steer got into the police car and provided information to the officers about the offender as they pursued the stolen vehicle. A few kilometres down the road, the offender crashed the stolen vehicle into a 7,000 litre liquid gas tank at a service station before entering the service station shop. 
Senior Constable Tickner and the other officer stopped the, the police vehicle and with pistols drawn ran across the forecourt. A strong smell of gas permeated the air and the gas could be also heard venting from the damaged tank. Senior Constable Gregalius and Sergeant Holmes then arrived at the scene. The offender left the shop and moved towards the leaking gas tank with his hands concealed by a jacket. Senior Constable Tickner moved towards the offender and ordered him to stand down. The other officers who were about 20 metres from the gas tank were concerned about the danger from the leaking gas, particularly as bystanders were nearby. Senior Constable Tickner informed the offender of the victim's condition and convinced him to surrender before apprehending him with the assistance of another officer. The other officers quickly ran to the gas tank and attempted to shut it off. By his actions, Senior Constable Tickner displayed considerable bravery and is awarded a bravery medal. He is also receiving a group bravery citation for this incident. For his actions, Mr Steer is awarded the commendation for brave conduct. And for their actions, Senior Constable Gregalius and Sergeant Holmes are recognised by the award of a group bravery citation. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Mr Carl Dunbar. On the afternoon of the 30th of June 2014, Mr Carl Dunbar, two other men and a woman were involved in an incident with an armed offender at a supermarket in Maroochydore, Queensland. At about 4pm, a male customer entered the supermarket and approached the cashier. As the cashier opened the cash register, the offender, armed with a pair of scissors, lunged over the counter and took money from the till. The woman, an employee of the supermarket, quickly pushed the cashier away and grabbed hold of the offender's wrist. The armed offender threatened the woman, who then yelled for assistance. One of the men, the store manager, approached from the other side of the counter and assisted in holding the struggling offender. The woman momentarily let go of the offender and moved around the counter to assist the man. The struggling continued and the offender violently bit both the man and the woman. As they continued to wrestle the offender, they fell to the ground. Mr Dunbar and another man entered the supermarket and assisted in pinning the offender to the floor and despite the offender's continued threats, maintained their hold until police arrived. For his actions, Mr Dunbar is awarded the commendation for brave conduct. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Mr Fletcher William Erickson. On the afternoon of the 18th of October 2016, Mr Fletcher Erickson and a police officer went to the rescue of two swimmers at Elliot Heads Beach near Bundaberg in Queensland. At about 1pm, police officer who was off duty at the time saw two distressed swimmers about 100 metres from the shore. Realising they were in difficulty and being dragged further out to sea, he entered the choppy water and swam towards them. The officer tried to communicate with the swimmers who were in a panicked state, with one intermittently falling below the water surface. At this point, another man entered the water and began to swim in the direction of the struggling pair. Mr Erickson arrived at the scene and without concern for his own safety, entered the treacherous waters and swam out to the pair. On reaching them, he saw the male swimmer was barely conscious and in need of medical attention. When rescuers reached the swimmers, they linked arms with them and began making their way to shore where emergency services were waiting. The swimmers were transported to Bundaberg Hospital and both recovered from their ordeal. For his actions, Mr Erickson is awarded the commendation for brave conduct.
awarded the commendation for brave conduct, Mr. Warren George Francis. On the evening of the 26th of April 1993, Mr. then Senior Sergeant Warren Francis and another man went to the assistance of a vessel in distress near Wide Bay in Queensland. Queensland Water Police Officers Senior Sergeant Francis and the other man boarded a police vessel and headed towards the Wide Bay Bar crossing to provide support to the Tin Can Bay Volunteer Coast Guard who had gone to assist a, string, a stricken cruiser that was in difficulty in treacherous seas. On attempting to cross the, the bar, the volunteer coast guard had to turn back due to the dangerous conditions and after crew members had sustained injuries. Senior Sergeant Francis and the other man began crossing the bar in their vessel and encountered violent waves, wind and driving rain. They located the stricken cruiser, which they saw being knocked down three times by the high seas before righting itself. Senior Sergeant Francis navigated the police vessel close to the cruiser and the other man transferred fuel to the cruiser. They then escorted the cruiser to a less treacherous area where both vessels anchored for the night. At first light, a Tin Can Bay Volunteer Coast Guard boat arrived and assisted the cruiser and the police vessel to more protected waters inside the Wide Bay Bar. During the rescue, the police vessel was significantly damaged by the high waves and winds, and Senior Sergeant Francis and the other man sustained broken bones and other injuries. For his actions, Mr Francis is awarded the commendation for brave conduct. <clears throat> Awarded the commendation for brave conduct, Mrs Helen Louise Gibney. On the afternoon of the 9th of March, 1991, Mrs Helen Louise Gibney and a man went to the rescue of three young boys who were caught in a rip at Surf Beach in New South Wales. Mrs Gibney and the man were at the beach when they saw three boys aged between 6 and 12 playing in knee-deep water. After a short period of time, the boys drifted into deeper water and were suddenly caught in a rip and taken out to sea. Mrs Gibney and the man tried to alert other beachgoers before swimming out towards the boys. They also got caught in the rip and were carried towards the boys as one of them was taken further out to sea. Initially the man reached and held on to the bigger boy before handing him to Mrs Gibney and swimming towards the smaller boy. Mrs Gibney struggled with the bigger boy who was panicking and pushed her under the water numerous times. Despite being battered by the waves, Mrs Gibney got, to the, boy, got the boy onto his back and they made their way towards the rocks where she pushed, him, pushed the boy out of the water. Meanwhile, the man reached the smaller boy who grabbed him around the neck and they swam towards the rocks. As they were climbing onto the rocks, they were hit by a wave and sucked back into the water. Still holding the smaller boy, the man swam from the rocks again and climbed out with the boy. The man desperately called to bystanders that one child was still missing. Unfortunately, the third boy, who was taken further out to sea, did not survive the incident. For, this, for her actions, Mrs Gibney is awarded the commendation for brave conduct. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Senior Constable Cameron John Mosley. On the 13th of February 1993, Senior Constable, then Constable Cameron Mosley and another police officer assisted a woman during an attack at the community of Hermansburg in the Northern Territory. Constable Mosley and the other officer were assisting a non-responsive man after disturbance of about 40 people armed with various weapons that surrounded them in a threatening manner. At this time, a woman came running down the road in their direction, yelling for help as the group indicated she was responsible for injuring the non-responsive man. The officer saw a man raise a pocket knife above his head and stab the woman. Constable Mosley grabbed the woman and the, other police, and the other police officer was able to put her behind the driver's door of their vehicle and shield her with his body. 
Constable Mosley went towards the offending man, restraining him as the pocket knife fell to the ground. He then collected the knife and returned to the police vehicle as the other officer ushered the woman into the rear seat. The group remained aggressive as the officers yelled instructions for the deceased man to be driven to the local health clinic. The officers re-entered the police vehicle and proceeded to the clinic. Upon arrival, they saw a large group of armed people looking to avenge the male's death. Sensing the danger, Constable Mosley decided to stay at the clinic and offer assistance, while the other officer drove the injured woman to the police station. The other officer left the female at the, lo at the lock police station and returned to the clinic. On his way, he was confronted by a group of men who ran towards the vehicle with weapons raised. The officer quickly turned the car around and returned to the police station. He and a third officer who had arrived realised the woman had escaped and could not be found. After a short time, the officers returned to the clinic in separate vehicles. During this trip, the other officer was stopped and threatened by a man armed with a steel bar and a rock. The third officer drove his car between the, the officer and the man. Both officers got out of their vehicles, assured the man that they were trying to look after everyone involved and continued to the clinic. On arriving at the clinic, a group of about 60 people had congregated and continued to act in an aggressive manner, dispersing after, only after the deceased man was transported to Alice Springs. Constable Mosley and the other officer remained at the clinic, assisting health workers who were dealing with a number of people reporting with stab wounds and other injuries caused by the violence that followed the murder. For his actions, Senior Constable Mosley is awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct. Awarded the commendation for brave conduct, Ms. Cheryl Lynn Suzanne Richardson. In the early morning of the 17th of November 2015, Ms. Cheryl Lynn Richardson assisted with the evacuation of residents from a burning accommodation centre at Ashmore in Queensland. Ms. Richardson was working at a supported accommodation complex when she heard a fire alarm activate. When all the alarms on the premises sounded, she went to investigate. Ms Richardson made her way to the east side of the complex where she could see flames flickering under the door of a unit. She opened the door slightly, revealing three metre high flames coming from a bedspread on the floor of the room. She ran down a corridor to get the fire extinguisher, informed a colleague to call triple zero and returned to the unit. Realising the fire was taking hold and with the duty of care for the 34 residents, Ms. Rich Ms Richardson began to check other rooms for occupants. As soon as she knew the nearby units were empty, she ran back to the other building to assist residents. Despite the dangers and smoke, Ms Richardson crawled down a passage towards the office to obtain the roll call book. She checked other areas for occupants before making her way to the car park and conducting a roll call, ensuring everyone had been evacuated. Soon after, emergency services arrived. For her actions, Ms Richardson is awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct. <clears throat> awarded the Group Bravery Citation, Sergeant Andrew John Bauer, Detective Senior Constable Stuart John Fairgreave, Senior Constable Wesley Thomas Hopper, Mr Daniel Joseph McFarlane. On the evening of the 1st November 2015, three members of the Queensland Police Service and a volunteer surf lifesaver went to the aid of a man intending self-harm at Happy Valley Beach in Queensland. About 9pm, a man was seen struggling in turbulent surf at the Caloundra Beach. A volunteer surf lifesaver who was at his home unit, went to investigate and was alerted to the man floating out to sea. The lifesaver ran to the beach and entered the water to assist. A police officer also alerted to the struggling man had already entered the water and was making his way 
to the swimmer in distress. Due to the difficult surf conditions, he began to tire as the lifesaver passed him in the water and reached the man. The swimmer struggled against the lifesaver, telling him he wanted to drown himself. Battling fatigue, the police officer managed to reach the shore and alerted two other police officers of the situation. The two officers then entered the water and swam 150 metres to the pair. On reaching them, they assisted the lifesaver to forcibly swim the struggling man back to shore. For their actions, Sergeant Bauer, Detective Senior Constable Fairgrief, Senior Constable Hopper and Mr McFarlane are recognised by the award of the Group Bravery Citation. So that concludes this morning's awards. Could I now invite you to address the recipients and their guests? Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, welcome to you all to Government House. My wife Kay and I are absolutely delighted that you join us here on this very special day in your lives. I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we gather, the Turrival and Yagara peoples, and pay my respect to their elders past and present with encouragement to their young emerging leaders. I'd like to offer our warmest congratulations to today's most honoured guests, the recipients of the Australian Police Medals and those receiving Australian Bravery Awards, commendations and citations. This room in which we gather this morning is known as the Investiture Room because ceremonies like today's are its primary purpose. That said, I should stress that investitures are by no means a daily occurrence. On the contrary, recipients of Australian honours and awards are part of an exclusive group, if I may say so, comprised of the best our nation has to offer. Australian honours and awards are a vital component of our social fabric. No matter which part of our country you come from, no matter what your background is, the honours and awards help define, encourage and reinforce national aspirations, ideals and standards by identifying people who make an outstanding contribution to our society. Of course, Kay and I, and I'm sure all of us in this room, are extremely proud of all of today's recipients. I say with confidence that you are the embodiment of the Queensland spirit a mate to many and of noble service to all. Queenslanders are tough, but above all, they are compassionate. There are many ways to make a difference, but what you recipients have in common is that you have contributed in a way that is both unique and altruistic. Unique because what you have done is truly out of the ordinary. Altruistic because you did it for the sake of others. Altruism is an evocative and inspiring word, being the opposite of selfishness and really a call to action for us all. Unfortunately, not many people know the true meaning of altruism. You do. You are the exception that proves the rule. For that, we are profoundly grateful and for that, we acknowledge you all. Australians, Australia's distinctive honour system was introduced in 1975 with the creation of the Order of Australia in order to recognise service to the nation or humanity. Prior to that, Australians were recognised under the British Honours System, also known as the Imperial Awards. Decisions about honours and awards are obviously not made lightly. The Australian Honours and Awards Secretariat at Government House in Canberra employs 35 staff who in an average year spend an estimated 40,000 hours researching thousands of nominations. All of this shows how special the recipients are. Exceptional individuals like yourselves 
help build a strong, cohesive, tolerant community that respects the equal worth, dignity and freedoms of every person. Distinctly, Australian values that we all hold very close to our hearts. We're also very mindful that some of the incidents for which you are honoured today had a tragic ending. We understand the emotional stress and the physical pain etched into the lives of the rescuers, the rescued and their respective families. It is our hope that those who lost a loved one can take comfort in the extraordinary efforts made to save them or the efforts they made to save someone else. Distinguished recipients, family and friends, as Governor of Queensland, the representative of our Head of State, Her Majesty the Queen, I commend you for your actions and emphasise how incredibly proud we are of you. On behalf of all Queenslanders, I thank you once more for your impressive achievements. Please don't let the physical symbols of your awards gather dust, but wear them with pride. You deserve it. As we conclude the formalities this morning, we invite you to enjoy the hospitality of your government house. I look forward to meeting and speaking with you shortly. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're able, would you please stand for the Vice Regal salute? Could I invite you, Mr. De Jersey, to retire momentarily while we organise the recipients for a photograph? Major Milligan, would you take our official guests outside, please, if you'd like to follow Major Milligan? <laughs> 